Hold on. Let's get to shit. Let's get to shit. Let's get to shit. Let's, hmm. Top of the morning, 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 top of the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Can I go a little inside baseball here? If you didn't have an <laughs> intro, that's what I was going to use. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you started, I, I went, no fucking way. <laughs> our, our boy Fantano was making some big moves. People thought he'd be a one-hit wonder after that. It's too many slices, but your boy's back. <laughs> with the top of the morning, top of the morning dance, and it's still everywhere. The meme magic of that song. Yeah. Like, that bit, that bit just right there. Uh, I, I think the the first thing I saw someone using it was uh, an American Psycho with uh, uh, the main character with his headphones on going into the office. Oh, <laughs> like, shit! Top of the morning, top of the morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even see that, but yeah, that fits. Speaking of TikTok, there has yeah. been a ad that I wanted to bring to RC's attention, and this might not be Oh, news. yeah, yeah, right. I'm about to watch it right now, yeah. Oh, that was the one thing I just wanted to mention about just that lyric part, just the fact that it's like, hold on, let's get this in. Let's, hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's, hmm. <laughs> like he's genuinely contemplating something. Hold on. Like, hmm. <laughs> like Buster Rhymes, remember that one song, uh, Light Your Ass on Fire? <laughs> the way your ass sit on the dash, I'm thinking, hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. See the police gonna tell you for carry around that ass like paraphernalia now. Listen. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's subtle, but it's all you need. So Samsung has a new flip phone, and it's like you open it up, and it's like a whole screen like it would a normal smartphone, but you close it, and it closes in on itself. It's, it claps shut. If you're familiar with the song, uh. Nails, hair, hips, heels. Damn. It got the meme treatment, it got the parody treatment for this, but unlike State Farm with their parody song commercials of like classic one hit wonders talking about insurance, they actually got Todrick to record new lyrics to that song, and now it's a flip, fold, snap, clack, and it's all about the phone, you see. Wow. Um, Alright, let me. In. So. I am not about to shame Todrick for uh, getting a little bit of money, and they really did go all out by writing whole new lyrics to that song and filming a brand new smartphone-centric music video. But what I think is funny, and I didn't even think about bringing this, bringing this to the show until I saw it today, they're trying to make it like like a challenge, like oh promote our phone by recreating this dance in your own TikTok. And mm -hmm. I'm on TikTok, admittedly, way too much. And also, <laughs> okay. admittedly, on the very queer side of TikTok, I have mm. ne never seen <laughs> anyone <laughs> doing this. Oh, no. And the only time I did, it was a sponsored uh, video from Samsung right. specifically. So they're trying. They're saying, please do it. They're injecting content creator, like, doing the dance into the timeline in hopes that it'll inspire other people to do it. And that's right. just not how it works, folks. <laughs> it's got to be more organic than that. Do you remember um, another one that I actually thought was pretty good? Do you remember when your boy Kyle recorded a song for yes, a mix-up Sprite at McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. That was pretty catchy, that. too. Like, if you get the right people, like, I think commercial jingles and everything, they get a bad rap for being corny. And right. it's because people haven't adapted and moved past the yeah. jingles. Just do this. Like, this works. You know what I think broke through the, the Rubicon, mm. as it were, or whatever? It was the McDonald's one with, uh, fucking Pusha T. The, I'm loving it. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Like, it was just so ubiquitous and so, like, god damn it, that's a jingle. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it was just like, hey, wait a minute now. <laughs> like, there's some, there's some artistry to being able to fucking do that, you know? Well, it was like, didn't they say it was like Justin Timberlake made the melody, but like Pusha T actually wrote the lyric or something, something like that? Something like that. It's the weirdest collaboration. I think, it, yeah, it was originally Justin Timberlake saying it too, right? Or singing it? Yeah, Maybe? yeah. I think it's funny. In watching so many retro commercials for Riff Break, just watching like 70s, 80s, and 90s commercials, there have been in my lifetime so many different catchphrases and slogans for McDonald's, like, uh, food, f uh, food, folks, and fun, or, um, 
It's always <laughs> the right time for McDonald's. Always. You know, like, there's always something different. It changes, like, every, like, two or three years, it seemed like. I'm loving oh. it. It's been around for, like, over 20 years. Yeah. That one has stuck around. Yeah. And that just goes to show, man. Like, get some fucking people in there. Don't don't just have, like, an ad agency, like, fucking Mad Men writing your goddamn shit. <laughs> get people who write songs and catchy hooks right in your commercials, and they'll stick around. Timeless. You know what I think is underused? I think Method Man needs to be used for more stuff in general. Like, right? Didn't he have that one? He did a song for the uh, Luke Cage soundtrack. And oh. It was, like, really fun. And then he did one for, like, the some sort of Sour Patch Gummy Bears or something like that. Oh, what the fuck? Like, eat them up. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, like, I think I made the point in, in an episode once. It's like, it's not that you can't do it. It's just, like... You know, do it in a way that's like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's kind of funny when I when you first see it, you know? And then you're you're more acclimated to tolerate it, with, you know? <laughs> the thing I was just saying about this phone is just like, I, you know, what they're trying to sell it on, right, is like the, oh, it's got attitude when you clack it. It means something. You know, I remember someone making that point where it's like, you know, if you're angry at someone and on the phone these days, you can't, like, angrily hang up anymore, right? Like, it's just like a right. uh, hitting the button really particularly hard. And so it's like, oh, they're trying to bring back some more, like, tactile feeling to it, but it's just like, I just don't know, like, would that, is this really gonna go for, because I feel like that was a trend of a decade ago, and people definitely dug that, but it's just like, I've already got my phone flat, why would I want it to be, like, split in the way it can be folded over, like, what is that? Like, I was trying to get a good look at that, and see how good that really looked. I think the back side looked okay, the way, like, they made it like that flip phone, where it's like, you know, it doesn't, like, cut your hand, you know, <laughs> if you're opening it up or whatever. Yeah. But, like, the fact that it is, like, with the flip phones in the past, you know, the bottom half was the part you touch, and the top half was the screen, but if the whole thing is the screen, like, what are they doing? There? Like, I was trying to get a better look at, like, what they were doing there, because to have a screen that's folded in the middle, it feels kind of awkward, doesn't it? And back then, cell phones were made a bit more durably than they are yeah, now. Yeah, for like, sure, right? I don't think you can clack a flip phone very hard and not worry about cracking the screen. Like, yeah, I'd be paranoid every time. I just yeah. don't think the gimmick is worth it, personally. Right. Ah, you know. I'm an old fuddy-duddy stuck in my ways, but it's cool. It's a cool idea, especially having lived through the first run of the well, not first run, I guess, because that would have been, like, those big old cellular phones that phones folded. Yeah. yeah. But who had, a, who, who, who had a flip phone in college, you know? Like, I remember those days, the fucking T9, if you wanted to oh, text yeah. with the number. Razor. I remember you know. that shit. Those were different times for sure. I don't know yeah. if, like, I guess what I'm wondering is, do millennials who I, had that's the flip why phones... trying to bring it back, huh? Is this for them? <laughs> Or is this for a new generation who didn't grow up with that, and do they have an appreciation for it? Like, we're trying to figure out the target market here. I mean, I get, you know, if you're trying to make it, like, maybe like a, you know, going for a futuristic thing, you know, those Buck Rogers, like, communications, right? Mm. Like, over and out, clack. <laughs> and like, get that feel for it. If there's anything I hear Gen Z people talk about in 2021, it's Buck Rogers. So <laughs> in the 21st and a half century, <laughs> they're they're really up on their fucking cereals, RC. Oh my! We've got a couple albums we got to talk about this week, my, oh, my friend. Well, see, I wanted to throw it to a little <laughs> extra thing real quick. What you got? I want to talk about Nicki Minaj. Ash. Oh god damn it! <laughs> oh, she thought we all thought uh, we were gonna yeah, get you're away. Thinking- with that one. No, 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 no. no. You know. <laughs> we we got to drag you, girl. Oh. Come, come on now. Like, when I saw it actually unfolding and what she was saying, I was like, what type of fucking chain mail email shit is she falling for at this level? She's like, oh, my cousin's friend's nephew's former roommate. He had a brother who took the vaccine. Yeah. And his balls grew huge. So so his, his wife is calling off the wedding. Dun, dun, dun. Like, Did you hear about the like, Nigerian prince's balls? <laughs> like, I gotta send I him ten thousand dollars, and I'm gonna be rich. Yeah, like Nikki. straight up, like Trinidad news and like oh. uh, officials had to be like, "Hey guys, w- no, please, take please don't listen don't. to the pop star on this." Right, like don't try to like put that on us as like you know, like oh, listen to what those island people are saying, like ooh, you know, tribal wisdom from these. You know how people try to like do that See, shit. It's like no. With me though, like at first it went from. Like, wow, 
Nikki saying this is not particularly surprising. She she's always kind of been on my shit list for uh, for one yeah. reason or another. Um, but it was when Tucker Carlson went on his show in defense oh, of Nikki, man. and Nikki tweeted in defense of Tucker Carlson, and y- like, your boy Hassan uh, commented right. and said, uh, "Nikki, he's a white supremacist." And Nikki clapped back with the, "Oh, so we can't agree with Republicans? <laughs> oh no!" <laughs> It's like he said he's a white supremacist. Is it? That's not like a political. Event. That's a very specific thing. And, <laughs> and I will be the absolute first to admit. Yeah, Democrats have a party as a party. Absolutely, do have a history of promising black people things and not delivering. Absolutely. And I'm not defending them on that at all. You can <laughs> absolutely criticize right. the party for letting people down and using black people as pawns and. Just trying to get votes and then, like, turning your back on them as soon as the election is over. That's valid. But what's not so valid (laughs) is to turn around and say, oh, like, we have to agree with Democrats and everything. No, you don't. You're right. Oh, but we can't agree with the Republicans on on anything. Well, no, you can. It's just that this (laughs) and this person in particular... You're not even slightly on the level of, like, rhetorical conversation of being reasoned with. Because, like, you definitely did not reason yourself into the argument that you were now waking. And the funny thing is, if you look at what she's saying, she's not even, like, fully committing to, like, saying, like, well, you know, no, I am saying uh, that fuck this vaccine. No, like, she's being all, like, half-assed and mealy mouth because there is no real argument for not taking the vaccine. I saw this one tweet that was just like, at this point, like, you're just like children that just don't want to go to sleep, you know? Like- yeah, like, why? <laughs> Who's it hurting? Yeah. Like, who do you know has this really affected? Like, this friend of a friend of a friend of a friend? Like, what? I'm so confused by all of this, but... One story about this insane thing, which clearly sounds like like someone who cheated on someone, and then they got, like, some sort of STD or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the, his balls grew huge before the... And they're calling the wedding off? What person calls a wedding off because they've got, like, a, an ailment? That seems a little insensitive, don't you think? Yeah. Like... <laughs> I'm just saying, if this was coming from someone who I already knew wasn't awful, I'd be more like, <laughs> but because it's Nikki and because we've known, it's like, yeah. yeah. It just felt like something out of a, like, just to see the actual, like, full argument of what you were saying, it just felt like something out of, like, a fucking mid 2000s sensationalist column writer, like, you know, from a, you know, those awkward women's advice column magazine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is like, I know we talked about how whenever the big artist drops the album, they fucking take over the top ten. And mm. the week after Drake dropped uh, Certified Lover Boy, I think he had nine mm. out of the ten songs in the top ten yeah. were off oh, that album. Lord. It's an infestation of Drake. <laughs> and if you look at it this week, oddly enough, <laughs> the three songs that after you fucking picked up the top ten, shook it off, brushed off the debris... The three right. that stuck around are easily the worst songs on the album. Like, the most self-parody. <laughs> like I will say, and I do have to admit, I think the music video did have a hand in this. I have warmed up to Way Too Sexy a little. Mm. I think it's this at was least... This a meme LMFAO feel of it, Well, right? see, this like... is the thing, and I've talked about this before, too. I like when rappers don't take themselves too seriously. And mm. Drake, Mr everybody's coming for me, everyone wants me dead. For him to drop a song that is clearly just taking the piss, like, I'll take it where I can get it. You know? Like, right. actually kind of letting his guard down, having a little bit of fun. But fucking was it, knife... Yeah, fuck. Was it knife something? Knife talk. Knife like, talk? Drake, no. I'm a super thug. Oh, yeah, I'm with 21. Doesn't that make me super thuggier? Come on. I'm, am I not getting mm-hmm. any super thugginess by proxy? I'm and not that, coming but, to the defense of knife talk, and I'm certainly not coming to the defense of girls want girls either. Oh, uh, let me make sure I got the oh. anthem for the girls. Oh, it's so fucking half-hearted, too. Like, this motherfucking idiot. Like, it's not even, like... Goofy over the top Drake doing these like it's just half hearted anyways like you know yeah. what I mean it's not even like oh we're having such a good time and he said such a goofy line it's just like no it's such a limp dance jam and then he just starts off with that and it's just like what the fuck I'm not having any fun why did you do that like and it says you know? it a bunch like it's not a throwaway line either it yeah. said a fuck ton in the song like you base like, the that's whole song the fucking around line. this yeah that's the hashtag like, <sighs> we've got a couple albums here. 
We've got yeah. a uh, listener submitted uh, track uh, album that we're going to be talking about, and we've got again. Another big fuck name in the industry, Lil Nas X, coming on through with the right. debut full-length album, Montero. Brand spanking new. So, long-awaited, we reviewed Seven back when it came out, and that was just the little teaser EP, and we've made our comments yeah, we about that. we were probably warm on it, right? Like, you know. So, needless to say, we've been waiting for it. But that is, uh, that's gonna have to wait. That's obviously the main event. We're first going to have to get to Red Sky with, and I'm a little confused on this still. According to, according to YouTube, it says, uh, it's hard to be an Indian. Is that the official name of it? I believe so, because if that's like all of the, uh, if the first song is like the intro and then the rest of the songs are with it, that, that seems like, okay. like that would be it. Cool. I was a little confused by all that, but with this album here, very short. It's only the five, uh, five tracks. And yeah, um, d- RC. This never gets easier. Can I just go ahead and say that? Yeah. Can I just preface like, this by saying that? And I'll also say this. Okay, this is my disclaimer because I already I already went through this once with right. the Black Lives Matter uh, mixtape. Okay, I one hundred percent appreciate when someone is vulnerable enough to put forth personal experiences, personal. Uh, trauma and oppression from from a nation as a whole. All that is completely valid. What we are here to do is mm. critique the form, right, and the technique, and the overall quality of this album. With that said, I think this was middle of the road at worst. Um. I actually, maybe it's just because I'm grading on a curve here, because mm. of the other ones we've got before, and that this didn't strike me as as um, opportunistic, I'll say that, as some right. others. That is not to say, do not get me wrong, that this does not have opportunities, because it does, and we're going to address those. Um I have a feeling we're not too far off on this one. Um, we probably have vaguely similar opinions on this. I'm going to oh, wager to say. Oh, I very much think so. Uh, remember when we reviewed the Puma Hele, I believe, the Hawaiian rapper? And it's like, oh man, I'm all for it. The message of, you know, native artists speaking up against the oppression, da da But man, you got to flow on the track. You got to have a rhyme scheme. I got to, come on now. Like, you got you know, good beats. You just yes, gotta stay the on thing. the beat. <laughs> yeah, and, and you don't even need to be like hi-fi type of shit. Like, I'm cool with it being lo-fi. Like, but if you can just keep the time, like every song, it just felt like he would start, you know how, you know how when you hear a song and you hear a rhyme scheme come, come out as someone's rapping, right? And you hear the first line and, oh yeah, that's clearly what the rhyme's gonna be. And then when they go to the next line, it would just like fall out of the flow with even like trying to put a rhyme scheme together into the flow. And it's just like, ah, oh, it's so like amateur. The trend that I picked up on that happens on just about every track is that it'll have a setup line and then the follow-up yes. line will end like halfway through the bar. Right. And it'll just have this awkward gap before the next line. And it's like, you can end a verse with that and kind of like leave you on like a thought. But if it's like every few lines... It's You're just it's disoriented. It's disorienting yeah. and it's lopsided. Um there was one track later on where it's on Savannah's act, the raw emotional cut. Oh yes, where it's like that was so wanted to give points to which is like Ugh. That that's the it's song in particular little... I have written down, man, don't make me do this. Because especially yeah. on a song with such a serious topic that needs to have attention Absolutely. drawn Absolutely. to it, especially this week. Oh, what, good lord. When this is, when people are really taking note of what the, uh, what is it, M- missing white woman syndrome, and people are talking about how, like, yeah, this shit happens all the time to indigenous people, but we never fucking talk about it. 
Yeah, and people are talking about it in Canada, especially, because, like, you know, there's the whole thing where it's just like, oh, Canadians, ooh, maybe she's a little, they're so nice, but it's like, uh, wait a minute, y'all been covering up some shit, too, ooh, y'all especially, because, what was that, 200 and something kids buried under this Catholic the church or something to that yeah. It's like, whoa, hold on. But the part I have written down here, there is a spoken word part towards the end of the song, and he's just talking, and it's yeah. like, this works, like... If you've got some shit to say, don't right, feel obligated up. to work it into a bar. It doesn't right. have to be... Like, it can be sloppy if you're just talking. Like, that's fine mm. if it's conversational or whatever. Like, that, honestly, I was Deep like... poetry. I wish you would have yeah. done that more. Because you feel like you're trapped in a box when you have to do it on, a, on, on the beat and whatever. Uh, yeah. But if it's a serious enough thing, you don't need to do that. And that's yeah. where I wish he would have done that more. Okay, so there's one track on here. Just to give you an example of, like, these bars, like, like just to hear, you, like, hear how, like, stark and, like, awkward it sounds. Like, America's Longest Warrior goes, like, America, it's time that we parted. You called my people Indian. We called you our brother. But then he has one good line. It was, like, it was something where, like, he's, like, I don't judge you as an individual. I judge you uh, on your principles. You told me to let it go us all in the past, but look at Standing Rock. No, it's not. Like, that kind of, like, uh, um, what is that? The internal rhyme thing. That kind of worked. But, like, he just didn't work it together enough to make it cohesive. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, but, like I said, he was dropping some fucking jewels on here. That's the damn shame. Like, where he says that thing where he's like, uh, you only lie and take no responsibility for your past. And yet you took our constitution and claimed it for yourself. You know, telling me to get lost. And this is like, there's like, Honestly, no rhyme in there, but at the same time, it's just like, ooh, that's some real shit that people need to hear, though. Because, like, yeah, the Iroquois, I remember hearing that, like, oh, yeah, their constitution was made this. And then, like, yeah, the, some of the founding fathers, they just kind of stole a lot of the, you know, lo, like, common lines or whatever of it. And, oh, yeah, and shit about, like, how, uh, wh wh what did they do, like, in New York and Chicago and stuff like that? How they would, they kept, like, certain trailways and walkways and they just kind of like built on that and manipulated mm. that and it's like so that's how it was easier for them to build a city because they literally built it on the backs of what the natives had built yeah. you know what i mean like but it's just like ah i just can't i could never tell like i couldn't recommend it because it's just so dense and hard to get into what he's saying and like i said some of the beat work on this is pretty good i stand up i think has like the best beat work and maybe his best control of like the cadence um and uh, gotta let it go was kind of interesting with the, sampling the song from Shrek. That that was at least you know that at least kind of threw me off. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. that to <laughs> me is what hurt the song. The pitch shifted sample. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't rocking with that, especially because it was so uh, much. See, of I like it. that. I like that voice, and I like that. Uh, you know what I mean? That style that he was doing, like in the original. You know, so. there's there's also one thing in I Stand Up, and I don't know if you noticed this, but I think it's kind of hard to ignore. It's on the chorus. There's a sound that's supposed to sound like a record scratching, but it almost just sounds like a rubber duck squeaking. I stand up for what we have. I stand up for what we all need. But I thought the verses and the chorus on that one, that probably is. Uh, the, song, the, the songs that got the highest ratings for me were I Stand Up and uh, America's Longest War. Although, and this isn't just a fucking Red Sky problem, I hate whisper rapping, so... I wasn't a fan yeah, of him yeah, doing it on that last track, um, but I thought the vocal samples on that song did work very well. Um, when they're not like you know chipmunk soul pitch shifted and stuff like that, when you just have people talking like on um, when we talked about that one album, it was the definition of what miasma theory was, right. and it was at the beginning of like three different songs. Like if you just did it the yeah. once, it would have worked. Yeah. That like that kind of sampling, I think fits and especially on an album like this where you're talking some serious shit yeah motherfuckers be having cool ideas but it's just yeah execution overall though um i still ended up walking away with a two and a half i, I gave it a one I, and i think I, I that's just, fair yeah it's just like rhythmless cadences almost non-existent rhyme schemes like you know like it's just so hard to 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 just like just these run-on flows that it's just so hard to like wrap your brain around like for after every in every track that it's just like the average person would not keep going you know what i'm saying like i just gotta call it like it is you know like yeah with that said we're gonna toss it over to the literal industry baby lil nas x 
<clears throat> Lil Nas X, that's right, coming out with Montero. Ah. The long-awaited full-length debut. Yeah, and, and before we get into this album, I feel like, uh, <clears throat> before we do, you know, I, I, I want to acknowledge that he did leave a positive comment on my review of his song. You know, I, I want to acknowledge that, right? And, it is, um, yeah, I think that's worth pointing out. Yeah, and, and while I do appreciate that, uh, at the same time, you know, I do try to maintain, you know what I'm saying, neutrality as much as possible, right? Like, you know, I see people like, you know, hyping up the album, like, oh my God, you know, here it comes. So awesome. And I'm like, well, I'm always the person who's like, oh, well, let's see. I don't know. Wait. You wait no, you, you, you know, get me on the hype train. Like, you know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm not going to be justifying a bunch of whack tracks, you know, like, nah, nah, nah. That's not how I'm doing it, you know? You got to remain uh, neutral 100%. Yeah, the integrity right, so, cannot be coming to question. Yeah, so just to maintain that di- that uh, distance, I feel like I have to say it like you know, I have to say something something inflammatory just to just to just to keep him feeling like you know slightly too awkward about being buddy buddy. You know what I mean? Like, sure. like on a person to person level, you know, like I, I you know I'm not made of stone. You know, I could be a human to someone. You know what I mean? Just talking to you. But when it's game face time and time to talk about music quality, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I gotta I gotta take this seriously. You know, so so just to just to affirm that difference. You know what I'm saying? Just say that I, I Lil Nas X. I hope when you're coming up with your next song, I hope you get conked in the head by a passing tray or something like that. And, and you forget how the tune goes, and then like two weeks later, someone has like a smash hit that sounds just like the one you were thinking of, but you can't prove it because he didn't 100% remember how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope that shit happens too. Boom! I just cope that curse on you. And see, you know what's great about that? Like, that's not something big that you that you can prove, right? But it's just annoying enough of a thing that like no artist would want that. You know, oh, like man. like I just put that bad juju on you. Like, <laughs> I think that's a bit too harsh. <laughs> see, and, and see, but th- these are the things that we have to do, you know, for, for the job. You know what I mean? Oh, like, well, yeah, of course. You have you have to keep up appearances. Exactly. exactly. And um, I'm gonna say this too. I was very, very. I was highly anticipating this album uh, m- myself, even though uh, going back to when we listened to the seven EP, we were kind of split on that. Uh, split on the. Mm. Uh, some of the deeper cuts not exactly hitting as hard as you'd like, but I said in that mm. review, because I just listened to it last night, that um, for a debut EP from someone who we, at that point, had no idea if they were going to even right. be a thing past mm. uh, Old Town Road, if it was going to be a one-hit wonder or not, that that was a pretty decent showing, and it had a couple other tracks on there that ended up being uh, fairly big. I know... Uh, when we first reviewed it, Panini was still relatively new. That that took off, not nearly as big, but I still think the joint with Cardi B should have been bigger. The oh, uh, the, the the rodeo. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's not fair. That definitely should have been bigger. Um, but with this, we're leading with the the title track, uh, the uh, Montero, "Call Me by Your Name," and if I can offer one. Not one word of advice to wear sunscreen, but one, <laughs> someone might get that. Some, <laughs> some form of criticism here. And it's not even criticism. It's a personal, it's a personal wish that I, like a small disappointment, I guess. Mm. In that, if you watch the music video for Montero, when he's giving Satan a lap dance, right? Yes. There is an instrumental break. Yes. I want that on the song so bad. Right? Oh and, my god. And it this... wasn't on the single on Spotify. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll at... wait. And it's not here either. It's the same Why? two Why? minute cut. Why? The song is so fucking good. I wish it was longer. And you're teasing us so much. Like, what would you... Why would you put it? You know that's the thing that everyone saw. And it has the. I, give, it's just like with Ultra Rattle, like, give us a fucking ripping guitar so have someone come, come on, expand. Like, what, what's going on? I don't know why people you know? think these songs need to be, like, isn't three minutes and, like, 3.30 the fucking magic sweet spot for they songs barely, still? Right. And this isn't even oh. two and a half minutes. Uh, so many of these songs on this album, just to say it, are just like, What? No, <laughs> like, why did you stop? And there's what? some I would dare to say that I think go on too long. Oh, 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 okay. Now I didn't give any song a relatively low score. I still rated this album very high, but this second half was not hitting me as hard as the first. I'm gonna go ahead and say that because 
with Nas, I like the higher energy. I like when he's really going for it. The songs where they're a little more mellow, chilled out, and he's doing this, like, low energy, kind of deep voice. I don't really care for that style from him. It's not what I've come to expect, I guess. And that could just be on me. I could take it or leave it up, like, for some chat, but it is definitely, like, it's a competent sound, and I enjoy it for the show. Like, it doesn't take it away that it's happening for me, but there are some songs where it's just like, well, if you took away these songs, this could be a tighter second in. You know, like, that's how I feel about it, right? Like, the fact that it is a sound that can be very genericized, if that word is can be made into reality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it can be a little generic on the back end, but, like, I could see, like, ah, oh, if you cut, like, one or two of these songs, this could be a little tighter of a ship. You know what I'm saying? I know it feels um, weird for me to say that I wish some songs were longer, and then for me to turn around and say that when I saw this album was 45 minutes, I thought, well, that feels too long. <laughs> you know, what was the seven albums? About, like, 20 minutes? Like, yeah, I feel like if it was about, like, 35 minutes of an album, like, I'd be cool with that. Like, that, that feels like about what, what he's got in him, right? Like, you know, so, yeah, we get the first track. You know, that, that's a cool track. Again, wish it was longer. Dead Right Now is a cool track. This is the track that I kind of feel like could have been shorter. Uh, <laughs> I've, I'll fully admit, and I definitely appreciate... Man, I'm going to sound like a, like a broken record after Red Sky. I like when Nas goes into some of his more personal shit. I appreciate mm. when he does that. Those end up being my least favorite songs just on a Aww. Sonic... Just like <laughs> songs I'm going to revisit level. Yeah, I got you. And if you put it between Montero and Industry Baby, I'm sorry, I'm skipping Dead right now. Like, yeah, see, see, that's the thing about it, right? Like, it's not a bad, that bad of a track on its own, but it's just like, like, cause yeah, some of the lyrics here were like, kind of like revealing. It was like, yeah. that one part where he says, my mama told me that she loved me, don't believe her. When she get drunk, she hit me up, man, with a fever like, whoa, you ain't even all that pretty. You ain't even all that, nigga. You ain't helped me out with with me. God will forgive you. And it's just like, oh, oh my God. It's like, whoa. whoa. Maybe that if you would have led cuts. with Dead Right Now. Mm, and then and into Montero. That. Then Industry Baby. Right. Lead with that so it's harder to... Sk- well, I guess you could just skip right over it. It but- does feel like a weird lull, right? A lull to put in the, the beginning of these, yeah, two tracks. Um, Especially because but- that's what I want is another serious highlight for me on this album. And Dead Right Now is just kind of sitting there. Mm. And um, Industry Baby, like, I like it honestly better on this album. Like, it, it, I, I could feel the flow of it more, like, with mm. what was happening in context of the album. But yeah, I wasn't kind of too keen on it when it first came out. It was like, eh, okay, you know. But I, it, I think it really comes together, especially when you, like, the way they use the, um, I mean, they use the, they use the shit out of the trumpets, but with the percussion, mm. like, the, tr- uh, those little hits, they use them kind of sparingly, but in ways that are still kind of like, ooh, and like, you can't wait for it to come back, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know? And <laughs> so, I yeah, like that really that cool. whole motif, uh, ended up coming back mm. on, God, what song was it? Oh, fucking, uh, Dollar Sign Slime. Oh man, Ooh. talk about a track I was not expecting to like as much as I did. Fuck me, like, that's a really good one on the second half. When I half. saw that title initially, I was just like, oh, that feels like that's going to be a bit generic. Dollar sign, slime, man. Ooh. But yo, that fucking hit. <laughs> that was a surprise. I really, really dug that one. And it had the same kind of trumpet energy on that right. one as it did on Industry Baby. A single that I was never really big on, and I still haven't warmed up to it, is Sun Goes Down. I just um, still don't really feel that one. Sun goes down. I thought it was cool. It, you know, sweet, somber, melancholic track. You know what I'm saying? Um, again, like I appreciate that he is so revealing on this album of yeah. his emotions, right? Like, and, and, and in this way that I feel like, you know, like we just reviewed two other f- f- fucking veterans of the game, right? Like Kanye and fucking oh Drake, Drake yeah. right? And like I feel weird about saying this, but like, and you know, this album isn't perfect either. But I was like. Man, I'd rather listen to this album as a whole experience than those other dudes. Cause it's just oh, like, yeah. They're just so up their own ass and generic, and I'll let you decide who, which one is who. I think you can figure <laughs> it out, you know? And while they're still, like, like you know, I still feel like they're presenting themselves, but it's just so, like, not trying to, like, care if anyone actually is lively and into the shit and really feeling it the way they are. With the same way that I feel like this young upstart is trying to. You know, like, I still feel like he's trying to make sure I like these songs when I hear them. You and know? I feel like also... Like, he's got something to prove, you know? He's got something to prove for sure. And also, 
I think he's more in tune with his audience and mm. knows when a song when a song is going to resonate, like right. personally, like something that people can actually feel. Yeah, because he knows people want deeper cuts too, right? Like he 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 sees that, like, and a lot of people will be coming up and be like, "Oh yeah, like yeah, I'm twerking and crying while I'm fucking listening to that." Like, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> you know. And like he's he's very varied, and that's very cool too. That yeah, we saw a hint of that on the EP. That oh, like for sure. no, no two songs sounded the same. He was bringing a lot of different. Like you got a rock song, you got a country song, you got all these different kind of vibes and styles in there, mm. and he does that here too. It's just the, it's just when it's more low energy and more like low key and mellow. Those are the ones I tend to, not necessarily, I don't, I'm not necessarily here for those personally. Not to yeah, say they're you, bad songs; they're just not really what I'm what you coming come back to the end. It's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, what did you think of That's What I Want? How would you feel about that? How did that hit you? Ah, uh, that was a surprise one. I liked that one a lot. Right? The um, light pop rock sound that he was doing? This, That's What I Want needs to be in heavy rotation, like, mm-hmm. tomorrow. It's Upbeat, so fucking good. Optimistic feel, you know what I'm saying? Like The fucking um, chorus is so goddamn catchy. Now, d- did it feel like the first verse was, like, recorded differently or something like that? Uh, like, maybe. It felt different from the rest of the song. It just felt like, what, what are they, like, it's one of those things where, like, wait, is this a decision? Or, or did they just record this at different times and they couldn't make it, they couldn't sync it up to sound the same? You know, like, that sort of issue? Now, I will tell you one thought I had is that coming from, you know, the person who used to run the, the Nikki fan page. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's probably, I'm probably not feeling too, uh, like, promoting that too much. Yeah, you probably don't want to bring that up. But what I'm trying to say is the reason I bring it up is that I can't wait for Nas to go, like, all the way in a pop track. Like, bring you fucking colorful mm. as hell, like, glittery, like, super bass type you vibes. You ain't for a super bass, I was just about to say. That's what I fucking... <laughs> because honestly, in Nikki's entire career, I don't think she put out a better song than super bass. <sighs> oh, damn. That is still my favorite song of hers, personally. That is yeah, the one that has stuck like, with me. What from any album after that did you need, right? Like, like I've always liked of Clean, Nikki's. Anything off of Pink Friday? I've I mean, always like, liked her pop Pink, songs whatever, Pink Print. better than her rap songs. Right. And it's like, I, I'm, I, I believe your rap stuff too, don't get me wrong, but it's just the energy she brings with the pop songs I yeah. end up fucking with and, and, way harder. And here's the thing, like, her pop songs can still kind of suck, too, when it's, like, clearly, like, oh, David Guetta, and she's not really, like, putting her on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's when she's really trying to make an actual track that she's like, oh, shit, that fucking pop, that worked, you know? Like, Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so but, I'm still waiting for that, and I think if that is something he wants to do at any point, I think he's very capable of doing that and delivering a fucking banger that is, like, yeah. the most pop ready like pop radio ready get them fucking well, dancing i mean well i think he kind of did that with montero you know i think that was pretty that that was pretty hot you that's know? probably the closest he's got i would say mm. that still feels i don't know it's not exactly what i'm talking about uh, d- d- don't feel definitive enough for you. He, 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 are you are you telling me you're saying to him, uh, I like this, I don't, don't like that. So, it's hard to review this album and not feel like that song is like a personal attack. It's like, okay, look, He's you know what we're Eric. doing. You know he is so that fucking fourth wall breaking, so you know he's trying to get ahead. Did you fucking see... Uh, he posted a TikTok the day the album came out, where he was just like walking through his house, and I forget what the audio was, but it was it was something just like, I don't care, I don't fucking care, I don't care, and the caption was like, um, me completely ignoring what Anthony Fantano rates my new album, like, I don't care, I don't fucking and, care. You know, honestly, you shouldn't like. You no, know, it, it's it's like, funny that he takes the time individual. to acknowledge it, but yeah, yeah. But you as an individual, like, as, you know, it, 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 I mean, if you were the type of person, like, you know, we, we should all be, like, you know, swords, sharpening swords and trying to get, you know, sharpening it But for your own, like, mental health, like, no, you don't have to hear people talking, being critical and talking shit about you. You don't need to. <laughs> you know, like. Now, what did you think about the song with Doja Cat? 
Swoop. Uh, scoop. Yeah. Scoop. Scoop. I, I, I didn't enjoy it. It was kind of mid for me. Yeah. Which, like, it wasn't bad. It was just kind of like, eh, this is a song. And I just don't like when people do the, there's that specific, like, way of saying, scoop, that on the auto tune just makes it sound oh. worse. And I feel like I've heard people do that. Scoop. Like, you know, when they do, like, skirt, but they're doing it in a very skirt type of way. <laughs> it just sounds so awkward in the auto-tune. You know, when I hear it, it's just like, skirt. I, it just feels so awkward. There uh, there was another yeah. TikTok that I saw this morning where he revealed, and I don't know if this is true. I, I'll go ahead and believe him. That he sampled a computer error sound to, like, make the beat on that. I can see that. And that's, like, a cool little, like, to know that kind of, like, Oh, cool, yeah, that, you know, makes yeah. me appreciate the production more. Right. But, I don't know. And I wasn't even really and, wild about um, Doja Cat's guest verse either. Yeah, exactly. And, and then what What was the lyric there? He goes, there's like a, and I'm trying to fuck little nigga, fuck the chit chat. I ain't talking guns or what I ask where your dick at. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, it, uh, the first thing anyone would think when you say, where's your dick at, is, is the dick. They wouldn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> are you asking about my gun collection, Doja Cat? Well, let me show. Like, really? Like, what? It's, like, it's so just such a goofy thing to say. Like, it's not. You know what I mean? That's not a bar. Like, I, what? What did Blueface try to make that a thing? Right? Where he's like, "Yeah, I got two dicks in my pants." Oh. Like, that, I don't think that's gonna catch up. It, it just sounds too silly. Like, you know. And I wanted, like, whenever I see, like, oh, featuring Doja Cat or whatever, like. Because it came first, I was like, hmm. But when the fucking, um, when it came up with the Megan Thee Stallion track, I was like, man, this is what I wish. The other one was this hot, you know? Mm. Like, I hate to compare them, but the Megan track goes way harder, and I like yeah. way Oh my god, more. okay, so I just thought, of the, if he would have said, I got two dicks in my pants like Alan, uh, maybe I would have forgiven that, like, right? Like, that's at least, oh, Alan two dick, alright, that's awesome, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But what did you think of the one of me? What did you think of that one? What was that one? The... It was the one with Elton John. Oh. Where he um, does, he's just not there. Like, he just, like, tw- tickles the ivories for, like, yeah, a hot second. Yeah. And it sounds good, but you're just kind of like, wait, yeah, this did have Elton John in it. What happened? <laughs> yeah, this is the I like this, I don't like that track. Um, yeah. I really like the catchy chorus, and I like the beat. Um, I, ge- I, I guess, like, that... 10 seconds at the end of the song on the right, piano, like, like, ugh, like th- I don't know. Look, I get, I get it. Short songs, it's for the fucking TikTok, but, like, after a certain point, you're doing yourself a disservice, you know? Like, let, the let whole these songs time, be full songs. The whole time during the song, I was thinking, where the fuck is Elton John gonna fit into this? I don't see. Yeah. Like, on a rap song, like, yeah, he would, like... He Elton fit in enough on that Lady Gaga mostly. song, but I still didn't even like that. But like, I was like, okay, right? like, how is he gonna show too up? Blaring and big, and I don't think people know how to use him to control him for this digital age. I remember hearing on a fucking when they, oh, Eminem tried to put him on a Tupac song. Oh, like, remember the Ghetto Gospel song? Uh, the Ghetto Gospel, and I was just like, this is weird. Like, you know. do you ever hear Elton John's cover of um, Young Dumb and Broke? No, nah, the so. uh, Khalid or Khalid song. Excuse me. The uh, we're young, dumb, we're young, dumb and broke, young. Dumb. Oh, oh, snap! That was a great Khalid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. Elton John I heard that. No. for um the Spotify sessions where you like do a song of your own and a cover song. He did that. That's cool that he is listening to young artists like that, but that is a weird one to me. Yeah, like, I don't know who, who fucking turned him on to that one, but yeah, I was like, <laughs> okay, shit. Like, so I was like, okay, you know, maybe he can fit into this. And then when he just, like, doesn't show up vocally at all, I was like, yeah, Uh-oh. that feels like a cheap cut. <laughs> that feels like a shortcut. It's like, yeah, well. I felt like I got self-conscious or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like, no, this doesn't work. Fuck it. Uh, I did enjoy Lost in the Citadel. Uh, I, I like. I thought it was kind of forgettable. 
You know, look, I, I like the pop rock 80s feel of it. I, I'm trying to listen to this m- way more than I'm trying to listen to any MJK, MGK joint. I'll say that Oh, much. I don't you know think that even goes, say. that goes without saying. <laughs> right. But yeah, it was like, what was it? Like, at first, I, I mean, my interest was speaking of the track just because it was called Lost in the Center. And I was like, ooh, is it like a story track? Like, where are we going with this? But, you know, it wasn't really that. But I still kind of like enjoyed it for what it was. It had a bit of energy to it. And like I said, like, you know, I think people are, I think people are feeding for a little bit of, you know, rocking hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Coming back together oh, yeah. again, but yeah, in, in an organic way, but it's like, it does feel like these are like, it's not giving it the, that second over that it needs to really like fucking rock. You know what I mean? You fucking bring them up, but we didn't even talk about MGK's latest snafu. Oh, what would he do now? MGK was on stage and he started shit talking Corey Taylor of Slipknot. Oh, shit talk Slipknot. Come on now. And he was saying, "Hey, you know, I'm not some 50 year old man wearing a goofy mask on stage or whatever." The and fuck? apparently, the beef. MGK, com- suck these nuts. <laughs> it, it apparently comes from something where MGK reached out to Corey Taylor to be on a song, and he declined. And now MGK is all offended, and he's trying to take it out on him. And take what it out the on fuck, him. Fuck, man. You'd be a professional, man. Like, they don't want to record. Hey, right, yeah. you know, okay. You know, like, take it on the chin. Like, they're fucking legends. You're, who the fuck are you? <laughs> now, if I was MGK, though, I would be at least a little offended that I put the fucking feelers out and Corey Taylor was like, nah, you know, I'm just not feeling that MGK thing. And then I turn around and see that you're on Nostalgia Critics fucking The Wall album. <laughs> I would be. I my feelings would be a little hurt. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I think. I think we're seeing the the hierarchy there. Then. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why is it Travis Barker providing drums on fucking nostalgia critic reviews? Oh no. That's the next step in the evolution. Travis Barker. That's the next step in the evolution. He's he's oh, the man. next fucking uh, pop punk star. But besides all that, let me see. What haven't we talked about? Void! Uh, Void I really enjoyed. Uh, that, I liked that you one. You like that rhyme scheme I had there? Uh, oh my lord. The fucking... Oh man, that one hit me in the meals. I was like, oh. <laughs> I even have written down there that it's it feels like it is almost pulling me out of a metaphorical void in how... You've got these slow, mellow, kind of moodier tracks, and then you've got this like high singing just out of nowhere. It's like, yeah, I needed this. Like you're bringing an energy <laughs> that was missing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we didn't. Uh, we talked briefly about the song with Megan. Yeah, Dawson. I love the royal pomposous drums puffing Man. and the solid ass hook. Uh, and then fucking Megan, damn, and she was like. Baby, all these hoes imitate me. You gonna fucking stand on a real slim shady? <laughs> mm. Toxic, suck his soul out, then block him. Got more creams than a Sunday topping. Like, god damn. Tales of Dominica. Uh, that that was a bit of a mid track. Uh, I thought so too. I really liked the instrumental, but right, I liked the dramatic strings. But it, it, that was one of the tracks that kind of felt like it, th- there should have been one more verse or something on here. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, don't want it. Oh, that was that was the one where he was going Super back and short. forth between the like low singing and the high singing. Yeah. I think I I like the switch up there, but for my personal taste it was too much of the low singing and not enough of the high, but I right, you. Um, I enjoyed, again super short, but I uh, I enjoyed it. Um I like that one lyric, it, it just, it, again, like, you know, this album has a lot of, like, lyrics that hit you, uh, where he's just like, uh, you know, I done things in my past I'm sorry for, so please don't hold me. Old people in my life should know that I am not the old me. Like, that was a pretty strong fucking thing yeah. to say. Uh, it's a simple but strong line, right? Like, the people that are in my life, like, they've seen the change, you know what I mean? For like, real. The you know, like, and that's the attestment or whatever to that, you know what I mean? Um... Rounding it out, we got uh, Life After Salem, which I thought yeah. was a really strong cut. 
Yeah, it sounds a bit like uh, you know, the 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 music that you hear on like a uh, trailer for some, you know, dark grim remake of something or like the finale <laughs> of like a Game of Thrones TV show or something like or that Riverdale show, you know. It's got that sort of feel to it, you know, like tonight I'm gonna set it all ablaze, you know, like <laughs> We haven't talked about this, but what you want for me? Yeah, yeah, what? There's a disturbing trend and it's disturbing only in the fact that it's just a thing that I don't like, but Have you noticed in the movie trailers for usually action movies, they get a a remake of an old song to be? Yeah, and it's always like it's the you know what started the trend. Everybody wants to (sighs) rule the damn it! Like the really (laughs) it started with me. The first one I noticed was Back to the Bir- uh, Birds of Prey. The fucking, uh, Hit me you're with a your real best. tough and, cookie. And you don't be knowing who they are, too. Like, who was that singer? Like, this isn't like a, a face. Like, this isn't like a person. Like, someone is getting p- paid coin for these. But, like, and there's a bunch of, and we're seeing them in trailers everywhere, but you never hear them on the charts or hear what their album are. Because like, I think these are just, like, yeah, like, generic uh, studio players making these songs. You know, just be like, oh, set, we got the nostalgia points if you recognize as a song but oh man ain't it a grim dark remake that you're getting right here like you know like there aren't grim dark songs you could just use as is you have to get the popular song that everyone knows and make a a dark cover of it for the i don't know right i'm never a fan of that uh yeah you gotta go fucking uh (laughs) dare to be stupid (laughs) yes oh when they do the transformers rake you know they gotta tap that one oh no <laughs> what oh, did I fuck. say? <laughs> yeah, oh, come on, let's take it to its extreme. Let's do it already. <laughs> you took fucking hit me with your best shot. You might as fucking well. <laughs> yeah, the fucking floodgates have been opened officially. <laughs> um, and get and- weird out and do it too. <laughs> Yo, yeah, you kind of have to. <laughs> did you fucking see that Weird Al did a... <laughs> a response to the Way Too Sexy video? He, yeah, he did a reaction video, and he's just, like, stone-faced. Yeah, save you a click here. Yeah, he literally just looks at it. <laughs> and you just and you hear just... it in the background. He's just, like, not reacting to it at all. Like, yeah, and it's like, like, yo, that's, like, the biggest diss. Like, <laughs> that really is. Like, I just got nothing. <laughs> God damn! What the fuck did Drake do to to yeah, fucking like, Weird Al? What did he do to deserve that? I, I almost that? felt kind of bad at one point. I was like, "Oh come on, that one point was funny. That one animated part was funny." <laughs> he ain't giving him shit. <laughs> he's get, he's stone facing him. Yeah. Fucking sandbag to the whole goddamn thing. No <laughs> sold right, it. Hey. Uh, and oh, to man. round it out, we got the surprising uh, Miley Cyrus feature. Oh man! <laughs> In for the redemption win. Yeah, <laughs> like, holy you know. Shit. And, and I feel weird is, giving Miley Cyrus any kind of credit because she really does seem to just hop on to whatever yes. is popular at that moment. Yeah. But like, I think it, she did a great right job like, here. Yeah, it, right. It's about what we can get from it. You know, at the end of the day, whatever. The thing about it is, like, Miley Cyrus does have a really good, deep, rich voice that when she taps into and gets in like a slow song, it's like, oh yeah, I can appreciate the textures and colors of her voice. You know what I'm saying? Like, that I can appreciate, and, like, when it's just that, like, okay, well, if you gave me that, I, I can take that. I'm cool with taking that, and that's a, you know, it was a fun way to, like, end it, you know, j- and just sounds like the cheeky sort of, like, ah, got both Cyrus's, <laughs> like, oh, didn't we have a good time, you know, but for, like, a legit-ass song, you know, like, and just calling it Am I Dreaming? <laughs> Overall, RC, what did you get from Montero? I, I give it a solid four. I got uh, a four also, actually. Yeah. It's very much, you know, about what he's personally going through and stuff like that. But, you know, he, he doesn't make it a slog or a journey to go through, you know, at least for the most part. Like, I feel like he's still trying to, you know, give you something to keep you up. While, like, yeah, that maybe there's one too many, like, slow ballads. But, like, I don't think it's nothing to, like, you know what I'm saying, nuke it from existence for, right? Like, it's oh, like no. a solid-ass fucking tune overall. Like, yeah. Uh, but with all that said... Uh, we're about to wrap up this week's episode of Going Off, and we thank you. A, uh, we give you a big, big thanks for spending your time with us and hanging out and uh, sending in your album requests. If you can, like, rate us the five stars and give us a good review and all that fun, sexy stuff. Because, like, like I, I remember hearing this first and just being like, you know, I listen to podcasts a lot, but I was just thinking, like, oh, that's just what the big pro professionals do. But then we're like, 
No, but like everybody is like saying is like, I think this is really just like, like these are the rules of engagement and like you should probably say that if you want people to remember it. You know what I mean? Like we got individual Patreons and Kofi's. We got a joint Kofi. That's how you can request albums. Yeah. That is a ko-fi.com slash goin off. That's G-O-I-N-O-F-F. Uh, the Riffcoms page has its own personal fan house, uh, that works like a Patreon, but it's slightly different. It's just another way to, uh, to help, uh, support us financially. RC's got the Twitch page a rockin'. That's right. You come through and we listen to the Billboard Top 100 streams, or I, I'll be doing other stuff like, uh, you know, uh, the absolute best of uh, certain artists that I like, and I've gone through their discography and, like, you know, picked up my favorite gems that are like, oh, man, the radio, the suckers have never played this on the radio, you know what I'm saying? So, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Like, was, like, how many, like, you know, Busta Rhymes albums or whatever, and I'll listen to it and be like, you know, is they wilding with us again? What, this mystical song? How come this never got to get played on the radio? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, I'll be doing shit like that, and, uh, um, and of course, on my Patreon, where uh, you get to see episodes early and also get to listen to my movie podcast, as well as get to join the uh, RC Patreon Discord and chat with fellow fans about stuff. And I'll be on there sometimes. And, you know, it, it, there'll be a whole ecosystem of conversation just be happening, like on like movies and TV and you know, uh, uh, comic books and, and video games, uh, especially. And there's a meme yeah. page where people just be sharing memes, which <laughs> I especially go to a lot. <laughs> so, just to get my daily meme, like, oh, boom, they got a new meme. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't miss out. You know, the the show doesn't end here. You know, you can always, like, follow what we're talking about universe. on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, or um, or on our own personal discords and stuff like that. We always got stuff going on. So, yeah, check us out. And uh, the party never ends, so to speak. But until next time for Going Off, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. And... Weezy ass baby, like the Afrocentric Asian, half man, half amazing, and they don't know who we be. <laughs> <laughs>